If you have been watching season six of Love is Blind, you know the situation with Jeremy is a total disaster. Well, things have gotten even worse because there is a new ex of his that has just come out to TikTok with a series about what happened during their relationship. And Jeremy has since responded. So I'm going to play for you her series. This is her TikTok account. It originally started with this video, which as of today, she posted about six days ago, which then led to her series. I was originally going to wait until she uploaded her entire series, but it's been about two days since her last post, so I'm just gonna go ahead and share with you now what she has. And then at the end, I will show you Jeremy's response video, so let's get into it. <sighs> okay, TikTok, you asked for it. Here it is. I'm having a really hard time. I've redone this like four times, and I'm having a really hard time getting it to save any of my videos that are longer than like five minutes. So if somebody knows how to work TikTok, please give, this, give a girl a call. <laughs> Holler at your girl. Um, so let me start off by saying that I'd like to first say that this story is going to be some very, very serious tea on one of this season's contestants of Love is Blind season six on Netflix. Um, the person that I am discussing in this, let's call them Schmear Me. So I would like to start off by first saying trigger warning. We are going to be discussing domestic violence and if that is a trigger for you please don't watch this video secondly i'd like to give a disclaimer this is i am not here to say that this person is like this to this day i am only here to say that this is my personal experience with this individual so having said that if you can't already tell by my page i'm not really a content creator um and so to put something like this that is this deep and personal on a platform like this is very daunting and it took me a lot of time to consider doing but i am here to tell my side of this story in hopes that it encourages others to do the same so i ask that you please take this with grace and with kindness and please remember that i am a human at the end of the day just be kind not just to me, but to everyone. So uh, let's get into how I know this person. So I met Shmirmi back in late 2013, early 2014. At this time, I was actually competing in bodybuilding for my pro card. I was taking a line of supplements from a guy that I was seeing down in Port Charlotte, Florida. We ended up splitting up, so I was on the hunt for the same supplement line in Sarasota, and that is when I stumbled across Shmirmi's store that he owned at the time. I go in, I find out he has all the supplements I need, I'm excited, I end up buying some stuff, and I start making it my regular place. I start coming in pretty regularly, and then I start seeing him around the gym. And he goes, hey, would you ever be interested in running a booth for me and talking about the supplements, handing out samples at the, the gym? I said, sure, absolutely. I was looking to make a little extra money. I was bartending at the time, so I had tons of time during the day. And then I um, work that, you know, few weeks, few months pass, and he goes, hey, would you like to, you know, work part-time in the store? And I was like, sure. So the more time we ended up spending together, the more we ended up liking each other. So this wasn't something that was like love at first sight. This is something that kind of took time to build up, a few months, really. And the more time we spent together, the more we liked each other. And we started dating. Uh, I started staying at his house more and more. And my current living situation that I was in, I was renting from a friend whose house was going into foreclosure and I knew this. Um, so she, you know, I just knew that when the time came, I was gonna have 30 days to get, a, get out of Dodge and I was gonna have to quickly find somewhere to go. So at the time, I, of course, timely, timely, the notice comes through that the foreclosure is gonna be happening and I have to be out in 30 days. At this point, we hadn't been dating for very long. So we were kind of on the fence of, do I get my own place and sign a lease somewhere? Or do I move in with you? And ultimately, uh, we decided to move in. I move in with him. So first few months, great. You know, getting used to somebody. You're still in that like honeymoon phase, right? So the first few months are really good. And then the bickering started. So the worst, the first fight that was probably the worst was when my brother came to visit. Um, so again, I'm having some problems with TikTok guys. So I'm gonna stop it here and restart. So come back for part two. 
Okay, TikTok part two. I'm so sorry it's taken so long to put these together while I'm very sick um, right now. And I have a very busy nine to five, so I'm gonna try to make these as fast as possible. I will not make this a Risa Tisa <laughs> length type thing. Uh, guys, there is a lot to this, but not that much. And I'm gonna try to be very direct and to the point. So trigger warning, we are discussing domestic violence. So if that is not something that you are okay with, please do not watch this video. And also disclaimer, this is simply my experience with this individual. I'm not here to say that this is how they are to this day. So let's get into part two. Um, I left off by saying that Shmermi and I had moved in together and we had been living together for a little while. My brother was coming to visit. So I was super excited. My brother has never visited me in Florida. So, and he had had a new girlfriend and I was super excited to meet her. So they came down when I was living with Shmermi and one night we decided to go out to a karaoke bar. So I had been to this bar quite a few times and I know quite a few of the patrons there. So we get in there and I go to the bar to get us some drinks and I'm there for a while waiting for the drinks. They're pretty busy in there always. <laughs> so I go in and I get the drinks and I'm waiting at the bar and I'm just chit chatting with the guy next to me. Um, one of the other patrons that's there pretty regularly and uh, Shmermi comes up and he's visibly upset and it, he's upset that I'm talking to this guy for so long. And in my mind, I'm thinking I'm just being friendly. I know this person, but it, he was upset about this, y'all. Like so much so that he left us at the bar. And this is before Uber and before Lyft. So we had to call a cab to get home. We end up getting home and all hell breaks loose. We get into the bedroom and fighting starts immediately and it escalates to the point that he actually puts his fist through the wall and I'm a little taken back because this person if you know this person from the show it you would not think that they would be like this especially if you know them in, in real life like when I tell you I have never seen someone snap and just flip like that to a totally different person y'all it was like something I've never seen before and the rage was terrifying. So I ended up sleeping out in the living room that night. The next morning, I am mortified because obviously my, my brother is in the next room. So he's hearing all of this. I am so embarrassed. And they end up leaving the next day. So obviously things are tense in the morning. Uh, they leave. We sit down and talk things out. And we work out a solution of how we're going to avoid this happening again in the future. And a few months go by and things are pretty good. And then another fight breaks out. And this time it escalates to where I'm trying to, I'm walking away, I'm trying to get away. And he's just following me around the house, in and out of different rooms, I'm shutting bedroom doors and he's banging on them, trying to get in. And I'm finally like, I'm just gonna leave the house. Now I have zero family where I live. And I, so I ended up calling his stepmother and I explained to her what was going on. And I was like, I need somewhere to go. So she's like, girl, come on over, I got you. So I go to her house. This whole time he is blowing my phone up. He is, uh, it won't stop. So I finally get to her house. I get inside. She pours me a glass of wine. We sit down and I start going over what's happened. And my phone is still blowing up, blowing up. And then he shows up at the house. He is pounding on the door. Let me and let me and let me talk to her. I want to talk to her. And she's like, his stepmom goes and answers the door. She goes, she does not want to speak to you right now. You are acting, you are too much right now. You need to leave. She, you know where she is. You know she is safe. She's having a glass of wine with me in the living room. She's going to stay the night here. You need to go home. So finally, he leaves. And I'm torn because I'm like, I love this guy. Like, I, I don't know what to do. And I'm literally asking his family. I'm like, you know him. What do I do? And I, and I think even they were a little like, you know, um, they weren't surprised, but they also didn't offer me really any advice. Okay, guys, part three. So he leaves her house. I stay the night. I end up going home the next morning. We sit down, we talk things out. We figure out that, you know, maybe we start over somewhere new. Maybe we leave Florida. We start looking at different places, talk about Tennessee, North Carolina, um, and he starts looking at jobs. Now, I, I was skeptical because I never really wanted to leave Florida. I always loved it here. I always wanted to be here. But it was either go with him or end the relationship. And I wasn't really ready to do that yet. So I decided to go with him and he ended up finding a job in Charlotte. So his job actually started before mine did. And so he actually went up first and then I followed up after with the U-Haul and everything. So 
we ended up getting a house in Concord initially. And I, my office was all the way in Valentine. So if you know the area of Charlotte, then you know that's a really long drive. I did it for a few months and then it really started to wear on me. So we broke that lease and ended up moving into a condo closer to Uptown. When we got into the condo at first, things were pretty good. Um, my, I had two sisters that had weddings. Uh, he went with me to both of those, you know, in, in those time frames between the two houses. Uh, so, you know, I was hopeful that things were going to be better in a new place. Um, and then I started to stay you know, with my job being in sales. It was very social. So it was a bullpen style sales environment. And so when work got out, we would all go down the street, have a cocktail and then go home. Right. So one night I go out and I'm staying out a little later than I normally do because I had gotten off work a little later and he knew where I was. I told him what I was doing. He shows up at this restaurant, storms in and is like, what are you still doing here? Uh, I'm sorry. I, it, I'm here just finishing up with some friends. Like I'll be home in a little bit. What's up? Like, I thought you were at home. He's like, yeah, but I, I, I think you should come home now. I'm like, okay. Is there something wrong? Like, no, I just think you, like, it's getting late. Like you should be home. I'm going, well, I, I will be home when I'm done here. I promise. Like I'll, I'll come home. I promise. And he's visibly angry and storms out of this restaurant. So I finish up what I'm doing and I leave and I go home. When I get home, he is ignoring me, won't talk to me. And at this point, I'm kind of like, whatever. So I don't press it. And then a few hours go by and I'm finally like, yeah, he's still silent treatment. So I'm like, do you want to talk about this? And it, it starts off at a conversation like it should. And then it escalates to an argument and then it escalates to yelling and shouting. And at this point, the, the argument had moved upstairs into our master bedroom. At, I realized quickly, we're not getting anywhere with this argument and I just went out. So I go to leave. I go to go around and I wasn't leaving the house. I was just going into the spare bedroom, which is around the corner. I turn the corner. I go around the, the, into the spare bedroom and I go to close the door. He stops it. I can't close the door. I go to back up a little bit and he flings the door open. The next thing I know, there is a, a pew pew pointed at my face. And guys, this is, this is really hard to relive. So bear with me here. Uh, I don't remember exactly what he said in that moment. I was so just in shock. But I, I literally thought my life was about to be over. I did. I wasn't, I didn't know what, I didn't think he would be capable of it. Guys, never in a million years would I think that this person would have done this to me. Okay. Never. And so he lowered the pew pew and I was able to run and thank the Lord. I had my phone in my hand. I was able to run out of the house. I had 911 on the phone. I was, as I was running and I'm, all I can think about is get away from this property, get away from this property. So I start running as fast as I can and I speed behind some bushes and I start running up behind the back end of our condo complex and I'm freaking out. I'm crying. I tell them, I don't know. I left the property. I'm not near him. I don't know where he is. Uh, I think he's still there. And all this, I stay down the street at what, for what felt like forever. And it was so cold. I was literally hiding in the bushes in my pajamas <laughs> and I finally hear the sirens and I can see the lights. And so the lady on the phone with me is like, Hey, I think they're there. If they're there, let's go. We can hang up. And if he's not at the property, can you please go to the property? So I look and his vehicle's not out front. So I walk back up to the property and I see the police out front. The first thing they do is they go, ma'am is okay guys. Part four. Sorry, it's taken so long. If you can't tell, I'm very sick and I actually lost my voice from coughing. So I will try to get through this as fast as possible. Trigger warning, we are discussing domestic violence and disclaimer, I am not here to say that this is how this person is today. This was simply my experience with this person. So I come walking back up to the house. I'm still on the phone with the dispatcher. I look and see that the vehicle's not there. So she instructs me to go back to the house. I go back up and I meet with the police officers. I hang up with her and they asked me, ma'am, do we have your permission to search the property? I said, yes. And they go, is there anything that we need to know about beforehand that we're going to find? I said, I know he has some pew pews, obviously. So he goes are here. And so I said, but other than that, no, nothing. Um, so they searched the entire property. Meanwhile, I start giving my statement to the officer that I'm talking to. 
and I'm walking them through, you know, kind of what had happened. And I go upstairs because I'm trying to explain to kind of where we were and what happened. And um, I'm, I'm pretty much almost done with my statement at this point. And the officers, a few different times in a few different ways, kept asking me the same question where they are like, is, does he have any kind of tactical or military training experience? And I'm like, no, not to my knowledge. Uh, and they're like, well, you know, is he a drug dealer? And I was like, not to my knowledge. I mean, you guys just searched the house. If he was, I'm sure you'd find something. So, and I'm like, but why would you be asking me that? And they're like, well, the way that we found the pew pews positioned around the house were indicative of someone with that kind of background or training. Like, I think one of them they found was behind the couch in the living room. And another one was like behind a toilet in a spare bathroom. Like, how did I not even know that was there? I feel really dumb not having known that that was there. I had no idea he had this many pew pews guys when they gave me the list of what they found. I was astounded. And so we end up going upstairs because I'm trying to show them exactly what happened and where in the house. And I'm pretty much done with my statement at this point. And all of a sudden I just hear yelling, it's like hollering. And I can't make out what they're saying. The officer that I'm speaking with mid sentence just darts past me, like pushes past me, darts all the way down the stairs and out front. I'm kind of stunned. So I'm like, what the heck is happening? So I go outside, I go to go down the stairs to go outside to see, figure out what is everyone yelling about? And I get stopped by an officer at the door saying, ma'am, don't go out there. He's here. Y'all, he came back. He showed back up at the house. And so they immediately have pew pews drawn onto him. They are like, get out of the, get out of the car, your hands up, get on the ground, get out. Like they are cuff, cuff y'all. They cuffed him. They put him in the back of the cruiser and they come to me and they're like, okay, ma'am, what do you want to do? And I was like, what do you mean? They're like, do you want to press charges? And in that moment, I didn't know. I, I was like, well, what, what would the charges be? So I'm a pretty fun, lighthearted person in general. However, this is not a laughing matter. Um, we're going to go ahead and talk about these, uh, accusations that have been thrown my way by a Miss Meredith Walsh. And, uh, we're going to throw some challenges, to say the least, at this story. So let's go ahead and dive into it. I didn't watch all of the videos in pure detail, only because I already know what's going to be said. This isn't the first time I've heard this. So let's just go ahead and dive into it. It's not going to be a 6, 7, 14 part video like the other ones have been. We're just going to go ahead and knock it out in one. So one, we're going to go ahead and address the false accusations. Yes, I was falsely accused in 2016. Two, why? I wish I knew why. To this day, I still don't know why. The only thing that I can think of is the night that this all happened, I had discovered that she was uh, actually going around behind my back and seeing someone else. Something that I had long suspe like suspected was happening. So was able to get confirmation that night. Um, none of this story happened. This just isn't a thing. So let's continue to go down the, tra uh, the little rabbit trail here. So one, let's address the whole police situation. Me being held at being placed in a cop car, None of this happened. The way something like that would happen is if I'm held a when I'm placed in a cop car, don't you think that there would be a police report over something like that? Something that serious. Don't you think there would be a police report for that? There is no police report. Yes, you did falsely accuse me of this, but there wasn't enough to go off of because the shit never happened. So let's continue. Um, there's no there's no police reports nothing available about this i've even tried finding it i tried finding it after it all happened i tried finding it you know a week ago at this point because all of this stirred back up for again the second time um the police department doesn't even have it they never filed a report on it never did anything because there was nothing to go off of why because nothing happened so let's continue to go switch this damn page a little, little, little heated over this if you can't tell um I'd like to ask some of my legal friends in the audience, audience about something like this. So in a situation like this that is supposedly this severe, it doesn't matter if someone doesn't want to press charges. The police are going to make that ultimate decision, and then so is the district attorney. The reason I know that is I was falsely accused of this and had to go through the whole damn thing. I, under, I understood how anything could work with this point or at this point just because I was on the other side of this. I didn't know what was going on. I had to figure it out. So one, there's no police report. Two, I was never held in on anything, was never put in a police car, none of that ever happened. Three, if this was serious, and if it actually happened, something would have come of this. There would be some evidence of it somewhere. And if anybody can find that report, like I said before, send it to me. I'd love to have a copy of it. So let's address my pew pews that were in the house. So I had, 
at the time, five f***s. Three of them were inoperable. Two of them were, one was from my dad. It was a 22, just The second one was a World War II Neither of those worked. The third one was a single lever action like a farming that I had gotten from my grandfather that was from like 1942. Also didn't work. I did have my own I had my own I also like to hunt and sh Sorry, it's, it's a thing that people do. One of the things I am most upset about with this whole situation is I elected to turn those over that night to not have any future problems. Just be like, you know what? I don't feel like being accused of this again. I don't like this. Go ahead and take them. They're like, hey, you'll get them back. I never got those back. Not because there was ever any evidence of it ever happening, but because I learned the hard way. If you choose to turn things over like that, good luck ever getting anything back. And those were destroyed. I lost things from my father that night. I lost things from my grandfather that night all over a lie. I've gotten over that, but obviously with this coming back up, it drums up a little bit of that, that kind of raw emotional feeling there. So we're going to address a couple of the bullet points here. Again, I didn't watch all the videos. I don't want to watch all the videos. I don't care to watch all of these videos, but there was a couple of funny topics that I'd like to discuss. So one, it's not like me to stay out all night and do things like that. Talking about Meredith saying she doesn't stay out all night, go out drinking, all that stuff. A couple of these things I can't prove, one of them I can't. It was an every weekend event where this person was out till three, four, five o'clock in the morning, completely no showing, completely disappeared, had no idea where she was at. I'm 23, 24 at the time, an emotional wreck. I don't know what to do about it. So I just kind of sat and dealt with it. I was really, excuse my language, fucking stupid for doing that, but that's what I did. The one thing I can prove, and I'm not gonna, you guys can go look this up yourself. I'm not gonna just give it, give it out at this point. I can back this up because there's a DUI from a week before we left to come to Florida where she pulled the same shit. She got pulled over at one o'clock in the morning driving from leaving a house party. Again, look that up in Sarasota County. You can find it. It's there. There's evidence of that. Um, here's something else I can't prove. It did happen, but we're just going to throw it out there is a couple of months to maybe a year after this all happened. I actually ended up getting an apology email from Meredith over this whole situation. She didn't have a way to contact me over the phone. She didn't have a way to, you know, reach me anywhere else. So she emailed me on my work email. Unfortunately, I don't work with that company anymore. So I lost that email, but that did happen. I can't prove it. Maybe I can find it at some point. Um, here's my favorite part of all this. Since all of this has happened, we've actually been in contact with each other. We've been cordial up through all of this. We were working together on a marketing project as recent as last year, which again, without giving too much away, working together on a marketing project for a business that I was working on that happened right before I went on the show. She is one of the people that knew I was going on the show because I had to pause working with her because obviously I've got no contact with the outside world while I'm doing that. So had to put it on pause. Also texting me saying, Hey, don't get married on that show. You know, we, then you and I couldn't get married. Obviously I took that as a joke because that would never happen to begin with. Um, what did happen though, is when I got back from the show, I went down to Tampa and I was with my significant other at that time. And taking a break after the show, just going relaxing, I get a text message from her asking, hey, what are you doing in Tampa? I guess she found my location on social media or something I posted, you know, whatever. And I told her directly, came to town for the weekend, need to get out of Charlotte after the show, uh, wrapped up just to chill. And all the response I get is, ah, girlfriend, got it. I'll leave you be. So there's that right there. I'm saying all of this to sum up, if any of this was true, why would somebody be in contact with you? If you were so fearful of what I had done by supposedly pointing at you, would you not want to press charges? You knew where my other would you not grab one and defend yourself? And then why would you circle back around with me and be cordial with me and, and you know, work with me on projects, be texting with me? We had gone to a lunch at one point. Like, I'm just as, I'll say I'm just as surpri surprised to see this all happening just because I'm learning things about myself from these stories that I didn't even know. But two, I'm actually really not all that surprised. I know who you are as a person. I f***ed up by letting you come back around. And you know what? Here's my repercussion for that. That's fine, but you're a liar. Moving forward, my legal team is going to handle this, and I've got nothing else to say. Thank you. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you could, please do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up. And if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you on the next one.